Jesus once told this parable to some teachers who wanted to know whom he meant by neighbor. When he said, love your neighbor as you love yourself, a certain man had been traveling along a dangerous road to Jericho when he was assaulted by robbers, beaten up, and left for dead beside the road. A priest happened to be traveling the same road that morning, and when he saw the fellow laying by the roadside, he said to himself, Oh dear, what do we have here? How dreadful! I better not get involved. This fellow looks if he is about to die, and if I touch him, I will be considered unclean. Then I won't be able to perform the sacrifices as usual at the temple. With these and other excuses, he decided to continue on his way. He crossed to the other side of the road and walked on. A little while later, a Levite, who also worked at the temple, came by. He heard the groans and said to himself, Oh, how dreadful! What a sorry sight! I wish I were in such a hurry to get to the temple. I really can't stop right now. Poor fellow! The, Le the Levite, too, passed by the victim. Finally, a Samaritan came along the road, leading his donkey. He saw the victim laying by the side of the road, and he knew that that he was a Jewish man. Samaritans and Jews avoid any contact with one another, and it has been this way for many generations of hatred and mutual description. The Samaritan was on a business trip. He could have passed by the victim, but he had pity on himself and decided to stop and help. My goodness, there's a man over there who looks badly hurt. Poor Jewish fellow. Here, it's okay. I'm here to help. Let me give you some wine to deaden your pain. Oh, bandage ruins the best I can, but we're going to need to get you a doctor. Can you stand in up, up enough to get on my donkey? We'll go slowly. The Samaritan put the victim on his donkey and led him to a nearby town. He checked into an inn and got further help for him. When he had to leave the next day to continue his trip, he told the innkeeper, Take care of this gentleman until he is completely recovered. I'm sorry, but I cannot afford to take in charity cases. I'm not asking you to do that here. In this bag you will find a room for the time you've already spent and the amount to cover a room and food for the hurt man until he recovers completely. If you should need more money, I'll settle our accounts on my return trip. Then Jesus asked his listeners to identify which of the three priest, Levite, or Samaritan proved himself to be a neighbor to the victim. The teachers answered, the one who took pity on him. Jesus replied, go then and do the same. Jesus told this parable to his followers. There was a rich man who used to dress in purple and fine linens and eat the finest foods every day. Bring me more meat and fill my glass. Outside his gate, there was a poor man named Lazarus who was covered with sores. If only I could have some food, I'd be more than satisfied to eat the leftover scraps from this rich man's table. Why, his dogs eat better than I do. Eventually, poor Lazarus died and was carried away by the angels to Father Abraham. Not long after, the rich man also died. He was carried away to a place of torment. The rich man looked up from his place of misery and saw Lazarus happily dwelling with Father Abraham, and he said, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip his fingers in water to cool my tongue, for I am burning up in these flames. My son, your life on earth was 
full of comfort. You took no notice to poor Lazarus, who was hungry and sick at your own gate. Here in eternity, the tables are turned. You received comfort, while you must suffer for your former blindness. Even if I wanted to, I could not change this. There's too great a gulf between his reward and yours. Then Father Abraham, can you do this one favor? Send Lazarus to my father's house. I have five brothers. Send, I would like Lazarus to mourn them so they do not end up in this place of misery when their turn comes to die. They have Moses and the prophets to warn them. Let them heed what the prophets have to say. No, Father Abraham, they're too busy seeking their own comfort. They will never listen to the words of the prophets. But if, what, what, if somebody like Lazarus returns from the dead, perhaps they will repent before it's too late. If they won't listen to Moses or the prophets, they won't listen to someone even if he should rise from the dead. Jesus once told this parable to his followers. You can compare the kingdom of heaven to this situation. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Does anyone see him yet? Not yet. I wonder what's taking him so long. I thought he'd be here by now. Oh, I'm so sleepy. It's way past my bedtime. If he doesn't get here soon, my lamp is going to burn out. I'm nearly out of oil. Me too. I can't stay awake another minute. Of the ten bridesmaids, only five had been wise enough to bring along extra oil for their lamps. The bridegroom was very late, and all of the girls fell asleep waiting. But about midnight, a cry awoke them, announcing, The bridegroom is here! Light his way to the wedding banquet! At last, he's here. I'm so excited. Quickly, let's fill our lamps and hold them high so we can see the way. Good thing we brought along a refill. Hey, my lamp is firing. It's nearly out of oil. Mine's completely dry. Leo, give me some of your oil. I'm sorry, but if I did that, my own lamp would burn out and, and I'd be no help to the bridegroom. Go wake the oil merchant. Perhaps he'll sell you what you need. Shortly after the foolish bridesmaids left to buy more oil, the bridegroom arrived. At last, the hour has come for my wedding feast. Find my way into the hall where I will meet my bride. The five wise bridesmaids held their lamps high as they went into the feast together. Then the doors were shut. The splendid feast began. When the foolish bridesmaids returned, Is everybody? They must have gone in already. Open up. We're supposed to be bridesmaids too. I'm sorry, but my bridesmaids are with me already. I don't recognize you. Jesus ended the parable with a warning. Stay awake because you do not know the day or the hour when the Son of Man will return.